Hey guys, Roby here with the Divi Engine team. Today, we've got a great tutorial for you that features the Divi theme and WooCommerce along with the new Woo modules for WooCommerce that let you create custom cart and checkout pages. Now, we're going to follow up on the tutorial series we did on cloning any online store. So we're going to be using the Divi Engine and Fitch layout and create custom checkout and cart pages for it. Now we're going to take a look at the theme here that we built in that series and we're going to change these boring cart pages that just kind of look simple here and make it look fantastic. So stick with me, we're going to get into it and create something awesome. Okay guys, so to kick things off, we're going to get started with the cart page and I'm going to kind of be winging this so bear with me as we go through this and update that cart page layout in the theme builder. So we're gonna hop into the back end of our Divi site. And then what we're gonna do is go to Divi and then we're gonna say theme builder. Now we've got all those layouts that we created previously. Your site might look differently, but what we have here is the cart and the checkout pages that we created before. Now I'm gonna go ahead and edit the body for the cart template. Now if you don't have a template yet, all you would have to do is click here on add new template and then you'll scroll down to the WooCommerce pages and you'd select cart here. I'm not going to do that now because I already did that, but just in case you haven't done that before. So I'm going to go in and edit this body. All right, so here we've got what is actually a text module or a code module with a WooCommerce cart short code. All I'm going to do is I'm going to delete everything out of here because we're going to start from fresh. So we're going to click on the green plus and we'll add a single column row here and then what we'll put in there is going to be a text module because what we're going to do first is put a title for our page. Now what we want to do is add an h1 tag here and then we'll just call it cart because we're doing the cart page. And there we go. Now we've got our h1 tag. We'll go to the design settings and we're going to go to heading because that's a heading. And we're just going to go and select bold here because we want it to stand out a little bit. The color is good because we're just using our default colors for the heading that we set in our um, customizer settings when we set the global options. And then we'll just set this to maybe 51 pixels to, so it's nice and big and the user can see it easily. Let's save that. And for the section, we're going to give it a background color also. And we're just going to give it this off-white color, which is F6, F6, F6. And that looks good. So this is already one part down. Now let's add another section here. Oh, sorry, a row. And it's going to be a single column row. And what we want to do is make sure that the background color for this, before we put a module in here, we're going to make sure that the background color is going to be white. And of course, with your design, you can do whatever you feel is good. This is how I'm going to make mine look. We'll head to the design tab and we're going to try and make it look in line with our my account page that we created for the Divi Engine and Fitch site. So, and if you didn't do the tutorial yet, definitely, definitely hop back and check it out. Um, I'll link it here in the description of the video. There'll probably be a card on the page that you can click that will take you right to the playlist that takes you through the entire tutorial. So what I'm gonna do here now is I'm gonna go and adjust some of the padding here. So we're gonna go to spacing and I'm gonna want some top and bottom padding of 25 pixels and then 50 pixels for the interior. That's just gonna give us a nice little bit of room there um, we're going to add some uh, border radius here. 15 pixels seems to be good. Maybe that's a little bit much. Let's actually just make that 5. There we go. That's a little cleaner. And then lastly, what we'll do is add some box shadow so it lifts off the page a little bit. And I can easily see it right there. Okay, so now comes the fun part. We're going to start playing with the new Woo module. So you're going to hit the plus to insert a new module. And we'll scroll down a bit here. Now you see that this new folder technique that they're using, when you click on the Woo modules there, it pops up with everything that's available to you. Now just mind you, you can't use all of these on this page. So we're going to have to work with only the ones that apply to the cart. So how do we do that? We can just type in cart. 
and it comes up with a bunch of cart modules. We'll just ignore the add to cart. But the first one we're going to want to put in there is the cart products. So we'll click on that one. And as easy as that, you get the cart products on the page. And, you know, we can go in and change things like the link colors here. So if we wanted to do that, we would just go to, to text on the design tab, or well, body text actually. We'll click on links. And then let's say you wanted to make them this orange color. Then you can easily do that. And we'll actually leave it at just that. Um, other settings in this module that you might want to look at is the elements. You can take the images out. You can take the option to add a coupon code or take it out. Update cart button and also the remove button. But we'll leave all of that in there as we want to give users the option. Um, in the design tab, you can do all sorts of things like modify the borders here around it. You can change the colors of the column titles here. But we are also going to leave that as is for this. But, you know, you might want to change these button styles. I have global button styles on there. But also that you do just by clicking here, flicking on the add custom styles, and then you can get crazy with all sorts of colors for the text and all that fun stuff. We're not going to mess with that. We'll leave that as is. Now, what you're also going to want to add here is you're going to want to add another module within the new Woo uh, modules in the v4.14. And we will go ahead and type cart again to filter those down. And we'll want to know what the cart totals are. So let's just take a look at what we have here. We've got all the information as it pertains to this order. It's going to have a subtotal there. And again, similar to as you can edit all these fields up here, you can edit the fields for the cart totals page here. So we're going to go to design. We'll go to the body text again. We want to change that link color to our orange. That's a little bit more on brand. And we see something weird happening here with the button. It doesn't have a blue outline for that. So this might be an instance where we flick on custom styles for the button. Button text and all that fun stuff looks good. But here we see the border color is off. But when I click this blue, it goes and aligns better with the design of my site. So much easier. Now you can go ahead and change border colors and all that fun stuff. But this is a good start. Okay, so this is all good and well. It doesn't look terrible, but you can even go ahead and style those notices that pop up on the screen when you're doing stuff like taking items out of the cart, applying coupons and stuff like that. So let's add another module and we'll just type in notice. And here's the Woo Notice module and you see how it's that ugly blue color. But first, before we start editing it, let's pull it to the top here. That looks good. And then what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and change the background color. And we'll make that our orange color because we want to alert the user that something has happened. The text color will leave us so, but maybe what we think we'll do for error text code will be white. But we will make sure that the error text code has an ultra bold. So that if something negative happens, the user is very alert of it. We'll even add one pixel of spacing there. So that that's it for the error. And then we can change the other things here. But the rest of it actually looks kind of fine. I'm going to leave that as is. And the button we will modify also. Yeah, to just look a little different. Because I don't really like the way the colors are there. We're going to go button, custom styles. What we'll actually do is we'll make the text color white. We'll make the background the blue color we have here. And we are going to completely remove the border. So now it looks a little bit more cohesive and gels with the way that our site is styled. And that's pretty much it. Now, if you wanted to, you can add some type of order bump or other suggestion for the user on, here on the bottom. I'll just add another section here. And then I will add another text module because we'll have to give it a heading. And then maybe I'll go with something like NH2 because we don't want it to detract too much from what's happening on the page. And then I'll just type something like our top selling 
products. Something simple, just like so. So let me pull this out of the way a little bit. Now we want to go to the design and modify what this is doing a little bit. We have to go to the H2 yet in the heading section. And then we'll just tell it we want it in the center. And maybe we'll make it just semi bold. There we go. That makes it a little bit more compact. I think that looks a little bit better. And that's that for that module. And then what we want to do also is we're going to add a products module. So we're going to look for the Woo products. Here we go. And then, of course, we're going to set it to the view type. It's going to be best selling products. And we will only say a product count of four. And that is it. Now, you can go ahead and change some of the elements here. Maybe you want to take the image away, which I don't know why you would do, but maybe you do. And you can remove things like sale badges, the ratings, etc. That's up to you. But for our purpose, I think this is a good looking cart page encourages the user to check out other products as well as gives the user these nice notices and has all the relevant information on the page now if you wanted to you can also put this um, on the right hand side here um, for, for the cart totals all you need to do is in essence make it a two column layout and you drag the module over that made an extra column let's just tell it no there we go and that's a much more compact view so it's really up to you how you want to present this but for my purposes i want single column and that's how we're going to do it okay and just quickly before we move on to the next step let's just take a look at what this looks like on the front end and so you're back on the front end let's click the cart icon and cool we can see that our changes have taken effect but we see that the footer is down here and it kind of messes with, you know, the continuity of the layout here. So we'll remove that on the back end in a second. And let's quickly see what happens if I type in a random, completely random coupon code. Great. So this was an error message. This is why it's bolded up. But you can see that our style has taken effect here. And if we remove a product, see what that does. See, everything works perfectly and it prompts us to return to the shop but just for further testing i'm going to go ahead and add an item to the cart and now you notice that these notices are not styled so you can go ahead and use the same method we just added these notices to the cart page and add them to your single product page which is what this is layout to have them be styled the same way and maybe i'll just quickly do that on the back end for you so to do that, I'm just gonna go back to my back end here. And then what I'll do is I'm just gonna simply copy this. So I'm copying the module. I'm gonna save this layout really quickly. So let me close that. And so we've got a cart here. So we don't want the footer there. So we remove it just by doing that. It's that easy. Now, if I come to my old products um, category or my old products layout in the theme folder here, I can go ahead and click the plus button. Actually, no, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click it. I'm gonna say paste module, and here's our messages now. And I'm just gonna drag it above the product name. So I can do that effectively, or maybe I'll just drag the name down. And then I'm gonna save this layout. Now I noticed one more thing that I wanted to change. And if I go back to viewing my cart here, here in the bottom, when I hover, these different things. I don't really dig this uh, overlay. We haven't used it anywhere else in this layout. So I'm gonna remove that really quick as well. So back on the back end, we've got this layout. We just updated it with the message. I'm just gonna save that again for good measure. I'll close this out and I am going to save all the changes I've made. Now what that'll do is it'll commit the change here of removing the footer. So let's go back to the body of the cart Sounds like a serial killer movie almost, the body of the cart. But I am gonna come down to these images. We see the overlay there. Oop, I duplicated it by accident. Let me just go into the settings. We go to design and here's the overlay settings. All I need to do is make it transparent. I'll make the background transparent and I'll save that. 
I'm gonna save the layout and then we'll go refresh our card page. Actually, what we'll do first is let's go to these brand buttons and we'll add the WooCommerce one to our cart. And now you see how this pops up right there. That is much more aesthetically pleasing to me than that ugly blue banner. So we'll go view the cart now. Okay, so now we can see that the cart page looks great. That overlay is gone and we're good to continue with the tutorial to that checkout step. Okay, so when I reload the page here, we can see that everything has been updated and but we see one thing we deleted that module for the global footer but it now it's got this really ugly divi nonsense in there which just looks bad and it doesn't gel with our site so what we're going to do is just go back on the back end and we probably could have done this before without having to delete the global footer you just click this little eye right there and that'll make the footer disabled on this part so if i save that and i hop to the front and i refresh and it is gone. That looks much better. No ugly footer, no footer that blends in too much with the cart page here. I think this is good. Okay, so continuing on with our journey here, we're gonna build out the checkout page. And what we'll be doing is we're gonna be replacing this really ugly one with something that is a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. We'll remove this footer and so forth. So you guessed it, to do this, we're gonna jump on the back end of our site again into the theme builder right here. Now, when we remove the global footer, we're just gonna click the eyeball this time and not delete it and the eyeball. That's an extra step that we don't need to do. We're gonna edit it by clicking on the button for editing on the body there. Now yours might not have that, but I covered how to add the template just as we did for the cart. So here we've got our layout. This is all just a short code. If I come in here, there you see just a short code. I'm going to delete out this section, add a new row. This time I'm going to do it a little bit differently. I'm going to add a two column row. And before I get busy with that, we're going to make some changes here. Well, even before the two column row, I need to add another one that's single column. We're going to add text because we want to put that heading in there. We're going to make it H1 just as the previous one. And then we're going to say checkout. Just Close that tag. We'll go to design just as we did for the other one. We're gonna to go to heading text. We're gonna make this bold. And then I believe we used 51 for the size and that looks pretty good. Now all we need to do is drag this to the top. There it goes. And now we get busy by just quickly changing the section background again to that off gray F6, F6, F6 color so it matches the rest of our site design. Now the first module we'll add here, and you guessed it, we're gonna type in checkout, and we're gonna wanna put in the billing address. There we go. It's got all this fun stuff for us ready to go. And then on the right hand side here, we're gonna wanna type in checkout again. But what we wanna do here is we wanna add a checkout details section. And what that's gonna be is a summary of all the products you have. And then what we'll do also is we'll add the payment method, which is what we'll want, of course. And then you guessed it, we are gonna add another notice area. So if there's an error that the user is informed, they're not confused as to what is going on. Now you can go through what I'm gonna do now and change all the colors manually. Or what you can do is just go to the other layout that we did and copy and paste it in right here. I'm gonna to go to the design. We're gonna go with the error, error text. Again, error text is gonna be semi-bold. We'll make it the white. And like we did before, we're gonna add spacing of one pixel. Now the last thing we need to do is go to oops the button. If I can click on it, there we go. Custom styles because that looks a little funky. I'm gonna make the button text color white. We're gonna change the background color to blue, and then we'll eliminate the border right here. 
there we go. Now we've got it looking the same as the other one, and that's cool. And there we go. So we've already got something that looks pretty interesting. I think it looks much better. We need to also just make sure that we add the other relevant checkout modules here. We are going to want shipping info right there. So the, this will be basically just a checkbox at the bottom, and it will reveal this section if you click that check mark. And then maybe you're at the bottom. There's also additional information in case there's some order notes they wanted to add to the order. And that's pretty much it. So now, again, you can go around and style all these different things. You can even remove coupons here if you wanted to. And, you know, it gives you just a whole bevy of different options on how to customize this page from that boring layout that we had before. So let's go ahead and click Save here. And then let's jump to the front end. And now we've got our checkout page here. Let's refresh it. And there we go. We've got our order here. We've got all the different options, but we still have the footer here. So we're going to deal with that in one second. And I'll tell you exactly why that's still showing up. You'll see that if we click that, it reveals the other options. And this is for that situation if your billing and your shipping address is different than each other. So back on the back end, let's just quickly see and make uh, you aware of why that footer still showed up. It is because we made it hidden but we didn't save it here. This is why saving up at the top of the Theme Builder page is so important. So now when I refresh this page and scroll down, you see that it's all gone. We're just left with all the relevant information. And that's pretty much it, guys. This is a nicely styled, more in line with our branding for the Divi Engine and Fitch site. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. So right guys, there you have it with a slight expansion on our clone any online store with just Divi and WooCommerce series. We created a custom checkout page and a custom cart page that gels much better with our branding and design. Now, if you haven't checked out that series yet, definitely check it by the, clicking on the link in the description of this video or in the actual text post on the Divi Engine site. So with that guys, this is Roby from the Divi Engine team. I'll catch you guys in the next tutorial. And guys, if you love this type of content, definitely don't forget to hit the subscribe and like button below and leave your comments. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Catch you next time.